We need to talk about Jerry Jones again. The Washington Post recently published an article chronicling Jerry Jones' history as an employer of black men in a league that has been at the forefront of debates in the relationship over race and opportunity for a decade now. And as the article's jumping off point, the article used a 1957 photo of then a 14-year-old Jerry Jones standing in the background while his white classmates attempted to intimidate six black students as they became the first desegregated schools in Little Rock, Arkansas. That photo has understandably ignited some furious debate online, and it's been quite fascinating to watch people put fairly recent historical events through the modern meat grinder of what some would refer to as cancel culture and others maintain as consequence culture. And I'm not here to talk about the way we've come to conflate social justice and social media justice. There's not anything you or I can do to stem the tide of social media platforming everybody's feelings all at once. The reality of the situation is that Jerry Jones isn't losing the Cowboys over this. And I'm asking you to acknowledge the reality so that we can talk about one way Jerry Jones could actually do some good here. Because there are people who are missing the argument. They'll say, oh, Jerry Jones can't be racist. He employs black billionaires. Well, the truth is you can still be racist and allow people to make millions while you collect billions on them during their playing career and long after they're gone. I'm not asserting that Jerry is racist. I'm just saying he grew up in this time. Now, tensions in this country right now might feel like an all-time high, but the truth is this might not even be a top five era for American division. And sometimes we get caught up in the idea that because white people don't agree on major issues along party lines, that that's the definition of division. How about the division that existed in the 1950s when it was everyday public debate whether melanized people like myself were worthy of basic constitutional protections? There wasn't a public consensus on whether or not we were even human beings. Now, Jerry Jones cited curiosity as his reason for making his way into the photo that day. On some level, I believe him. After all, curiosity isn't the absence of hate. It's often just the attraction to the spectacle. And Cowboys fans should know better than anybody else that 90% of the people who tune in to see the boys in blue on any given Sunday are active haters attracted to the spectacle. And Jerry Jones likely spent his childhood in a homogenized environment surrounded by people that carried the popular public sentiment of the time, which was one that coming to grips with the idea that black people weren't quite property, but they also weren't quite people. And it's Jerry Jones' direct connection to that time period that gives him an opportunity to talk about the exact path he and others like him had to travel to evolve out of that mindset. I know for some, it's not ever going to be enough to repeatedly denounce the popular sentiment of the era which they were raised in. They have to be a leader in every facet of every kind of social progressive movement and perpetually atone for the sins of themselves and their kin. My message isn't for those people that carry that standard, but everyone else with more realistic expectations of a billionaire born in the American South at the height of Jim Crow what we really need is honesty. We're living in a time when the very idea of educating kids on the history of how dehumanization of black people has shaped the experience of a nation has become too bitter pill to swallow in the educational curriculum in some Southern states. We can't teach history. It makes white kids feel bad. It, it's history. We can spend a semester talking about the revolutionary spilling of unjustly taxed tea, but we can't spill the tea on subsequent injustice of an unfairly taxed race. Jerry Jones experience as a still living, still thriving white Southern American billionaire whose boyhood friends gathered to hatefully block the path of children whose only crime was desiring equal access to education. It has value. And encouraging Jerry Jones to slink away into obscurity with billions of cash like Donald Sterling isn't going to bring society maximum value here. Forcing something that happened seven years before the Civil Rights Act was passed and 20 years before Tom Brady was even born isn't going to accomplish anything either. 
What we need from Jerry Jones at this moment is for him to open up about his time in the segregated South and use his platform to put context to all facets of that photograph, the visible anger, the fear, the spectacle, and the bravery of the North Little Rock Six. I'm not suggesting Jerry Jones can solve racism, but I'm saying that there are plenty of people curious who gathered around the spectacle of this story. They're craning their necks for a better view. A story that at its root is one which is triumph over hate. A story whose main character shouldn't be Jerry Jones at all, but instead it should be about Richard Lindsay, Gerald Persons, Harold Smith, Eugene Hall, Frank and William Henderson, who showed up to the North Little Rock High School despite the school board telling them not to. Jerry Jones has the opportunity here to make sure that we know those names and we know how their courage in the face of his curiosity helped push the country forward a more just future for everybody. It's an opportunity I hope he's curious enough to take. Let that sink in.